Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on animal, plant, and bacterial cell. Now, before you watch this video, you don't need to know anything. This is the very beginning of the combined science. No. Ah. Now, in this video, we are going to look at the seven life processes. We'll look at what a cell is, and then we'll look at animal cells, plant cells, and bacterial cells in turn. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the seven life processes. Now you might remember from earlier um, in your scientific career that the seven life processes are the seven things that all living things can do. And these are movement, i.e. just moving around, respiration, that is releasing energy from food molecules, sensitivity, that's the ability to sense and respond to changes in the environment, growth, getting bigger, reproduction, making offspring, excretion, which is removing waste from the body, and finally, nutrition, that is absorbing molecules from the outside. Now, none of this is actually assessed technically at GCSE level, but it underpins a lot of what's, what's covered at GCSE, so it's well worth knowing. Now, um, I've also got for you a lesson in why not to use AI too much or why not to trust it, because I asked AI to draw me a picture uh, of a living thing doing all the seven life processes. And whilst it did get moving and sensing, it also got um, extusing, whatever that means, um, and receiving and resienting. So, uh, yeah, just, just be careful when you use the AI. OK, so what are cells? Cells are the smallest unit of living things. That is to say, they're the smallest part of a living thing that can still be considered to be alive. And we often draw them in diagrams like this one, this one, and this one, which we'll see in a lot more detail later on in this video. Now, living organisms can be unicellular. That means they're made from only one cell. A bacterium is a good example of that. The entire bacterium is just one single cell. Or they can be multicellular, like you or me. These are organisms made from many cells. How many cells? Well, you and I are probably made from between five and 10 trillion cells. Cells are very small. So bacterial cells range in size from 0 0.1 to five micrometers. That's what that funny symbol means there. We'll talk more about micrometers in a later video, but that is 0 0.0001 to 0 0.005 millimeters. And animal cells and plant cells are bigger than that. They are 10 to 100 micrometers. So that's 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 millimeters in diameter. It's just worth noting that whilst um, the diagrams we draw are always two dimensional, cells are actually three dimensional objects. We view them as two dimensional when we see them under a microscope like that. But that's because we can't, because we're looking on sort of a top-down view. So we don't get that whole 3D depth to them. But we must bear in mind that they are three-dimensional objects. So let's look at our first kind of cell. This is an animal cell. Now, animal cells, as all cells, are made from a range of what we call subcellular structures. Sometimes we call them organelles as well. And these are the individual parts that a cell is made from. Now, there are five subcellular structures that we need to know about in animal cells and the first one is the cell membrane here now the cell membrane is this layer that or boundary around the entire outside of the cell it's a permeable layer that controls what enters and leaves the animal cell the next thing we've got is inside the cell membrane is the cytoplasm this is a jelly-like substance where chemical reactions take place. Now, we have to understand that cells, and in fact, all living things, are really just very complicated chemical reactions. All of the things inside a cell are chemicals, and all of the things that happen inside a cell are chemical reactions. And those chemical reactions happen in what we call the cytoplasm. Our next subcellular structure or organelle is the nucleus. Now the nucleus contains DNA and it controls the cell's activities. Um, you might hear in some places that the nucleus gets called the brain of the cell. Never ever say that. 
we are not going to say it's the brain of the cell because it's not a brain it's not made of nerves and it can't think but it does control what the cell does so we say it controls the cell next we have the mitochondria um, you might see uh, on the internet these often get called the powerhouse of the cell that's not a bad description but that won't get marked in an exam so the mitochondria these are organelles that release energy by aerobic respiration and the last structure we've got is called the ribosome ribosomes their job is to make proteins and we've got hundreds of them in every one of our cells um, proteins are the uh, are very important molecules that each you know there are lots of different proteins in our cells and they all do different jobs and those proteins are all made by these hundreds and hundreds of ribosomes so that is our animal cells they've got cell membrane cytoplasm nucleus mitochondria and ribosomes on to our plant cells now plant cells are more complicated than animal cells in addition to the cell membrane and the cytoplasm and the nucleus the mitochondria and the ribosomes they've got three other organelles three other subcellular structures the first of these is the chloroplasts these green uh, organelles that you can see here now the chloroplasts are where photosynthesis happens and they contain chlorophyll to allow them to photosynthesize the chlorophyll is the chemical that makes the chloroplasts green the next thing we've got is the cell wall now the cell wall is this thicker layer here that sits outside the cell membrane and it provides strength and support for the cell and it's made of a chemical called cellulose lastly we've got the permanent vacuole the permanent vacuole is this big empty looking space in the middle of the cell it's not actually empty it contains a liquid called sap um, which stores nutrients and sugars for the cell but also it supports the cell it works a bit like the air in a car tire that um, you know supports the tire you know that without any air in the tire it's flat and the car isn't supported same if there's no sap inside our permanent vacuole now the last kind of cell we're going to look at is the bacterial cells and um, these have some features in common with animal and plant cells so they have the cell membrane to control what enters and leaves the cell they've got the cytoplasm for chemical reactions to take place and they also have the ribosomes to make proteins however in addition to that they've got a couple of other things they've got what we call chromosomal DNA now this is DNA that is floating freely in the cytoplasm rather than being held within a nucleus this chromosomal DNA is a large loop of DNA that contains most of the bacteria's genes we've also got some smaller loops of DNA that we call plasmids now the plasmid DNA is again floating freely in the cytoplasm rather than being in the nucleus and it contain it's made up of these small loops of DNA containing only a few genes again similar to a plant cell we've got a cell wall to provide strength and support but this time it's not made of cellulose it's made from a different material and we've also got what we call a flagellum or a tail which is there for movement so this flagellum or these flagella because it's plural there the flagella can rotate and enable the um, and sort of flap around and enable the bacteria to move around only some bacteria have these flagella it's also worth noting that there is no nucleus in a bacterial cell and there are no mitochondria in a bacterial cell okay so that's it the end as always thank you for listening and well done if you got this far